So we want to look at these three topics. So let's start with the first one. What do they mean by standard entropy of formation? Now, formation is basically the production of one mole of a substance from its constituent element. For example, if I have um, CO2, now gotten from C plus O2. Now this is actually reaction for the formation of this from its constituent element, which is carbon and oxygen, right? So anytime a compound is formed from its constituent element, that is a formation reaction, okay? So the entropy that accompanies such reactions are called standard entropy of formation. If it was enthalpy, we could say standard enthalpy of formation. If it is Gibbs free energy, we could say standard Gibbs free energy of formation, all right? Now, now let's assume this A are uh, compounds. Let's say A, C, O, 2, B is something else, but they are all compounds. Now, the entropy change of this can be calculated by taking into consideration the entropy change of formation for each of these. Okay, so we're going to take an example to explain how this particular question works. But before then, let's assume a reaction is given to us this way. Change in entropy, which is delta S. Now, anytime you're given a reaction, right, like this, and you're being given individual entropy of formation for each of these, you can actually use that to solve for the entropy of the reaction. By simply saying this sign stands for summation, like you sum summation of entropy of formation of the product. Now this n is the stoichiometric coefficient, which is this c and this d, right? And of course minus sum summation of that of the reactants. Now once you do that, you get the entropy of the reaction. All right, um, so let's dive straight into the point. Now what I'm trying to say in essence is that. Nobody is going to ask to start defining standard entropy, all right? But the application of this is that you can use the standard entropy of formation of the individual species, right? To solve that of the entropy change of the reaction, right? So this concept now is really going to show us how we can solve for the entropy change of a reaction when we know the entropy change for each of the species involved in the reaction. Now, let's look at this question they said. Calculate the standard entropy change in the decomposition of this. Now, the reaction here is the decomposition which calcium carbonates, our limestone, decomposes to calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Now, if you notice, they said, given that the entropy of formation of calcium oxide is this, that of calcium carbonate is this, and that of this is this. So it's very simple. How do we solve this? You apply this concept. Remember, I said this um, sign stands for sum, addition. This N stands for the coefficients. So I'll come here, I'll say, let's just stick to this so that I will not have to write the formula again. In exams, you don't really have to start rewriting this, okay? So just come here and say, sum, product, I come to the product, the coefficient of all of them is one, one. So there is nothing there. So I'll simply say, product first. So the coefficient of the first product is one times, what is the entropy change of formation of calcium oxide? 40. So this is 1 times 40 plus, remember, we are still we are dealing with the product side, plus this product has two species. So I'm done with the first one. I move down to the next one. What is the coefficient here? 1. So I'll say 1 times, what is this entropy of formation of CO2? 213. Now, this is for the products. Now, this sum is actually what we have here. So, you actually do for individual um, product species, and then you add it up. Assuming this guy, the coefficient here was 2, right? I would have used 2 here, okay? Now, we come down here. The reactant has just one species. So, obviously, there's nothing we're going to be adding up here. So, the coefficient here is 1. So, we have 1 times... What is the entropy change of calcium carbonate? 92.9. Delta S of the reaction will now give us 161 joules per Kelvin per mole. Now, the unit is the same thing as what they gave us here. 
Okay. All right, guys. Um, we have the next topic: free energy as a criterion for spontaneous change. Now, oftentimes, they actually give a reaction and they say to predict the spontaneity of a particular reaction. Now, it is important for us to know that there are parameters in thermodynamics that helps us to tell if a reaction is spontaneous, and that one of those parameters is delta G, Gibbs free energy, right? Now, first and foremost, what is Gibbs free energy? Now, it is called free energy, and it is Gibbs. That is why it is G. This, del this delta, this triangle stands for change. So, change in Gibbs free energy is the energy available or give free energy is the energy available to do useful work, like not just any kind of work, but work that is very, very useful, all right? Now, we have a formula here that relates change in this free energy to enthalpy change, entropy, and temperature, all right? Now, basically, um, this particular formula, there are times where the condition will be standard. If it is standard, here they will put a dot, um, something like this superscript to indicate that it's a standard, all right? So just in case um, you don't see this or you see this, it doesn't really matter. The temperature, standard temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, okay? So anytime you're using standard, most times you always see this. It doesn't really change this formula. Now, the delta G is Gibbs free energy change, all right? Now, delta H is enthalpy change. Delta S is entropy change and T is temperature. Now, if you are asked to predict the spontaneity of a reaction, now that is to tell if the reaction is spontaneous or not. All you just have to do is to find out what the value of delta G is. If delta G, after solving for the delta G, the answer is less than zero. That is, you're getting a negative value. All right? Now, the reaction is spontaneous. Now, but if you get zero on the dot, the reaction is neither spontaneous nor non-spontaneous, but it's at equilibrium, right? It's neither going front nor back. Now, but if delta G is greater than zero, it is non-spontaneous. Greater than zero simply means it is positive. It could be plus one, plus two, and the rest of them. Now, there is a question from last year past question. They said, predict the spontaneity of formation of NO from N2 and O2. The action is not really necessary because they didn't really ask us to show the reaction. They only asked us to solve, to predict the spontaneity. So in exams, you don't really have to start, you know, getting the reactions out. But for the sake of learning, I'll show us. Now you come here, formation, you put this as a product, right? Now the two elements that makes up this product is nitrogen and oxygen. You come here and put N plus O. But nitrogen and oxygen, they are diatomic. That means they cannot exist as N. They must exist as N2. Okay? So if you do this, if you balance this equation, this is what you're going to have. But they didn't really ask us to balance the equation, so we are not interested in the equation, right? So what we just need is to solve for delta G, because if you're asked to predict the spontaneity of a reaction, all, right, all you just have to do is to check for delta G. If it is an electrochemical cell, if it is a galvanic cell, cell potential has to be positive. But in thermodynamics, delta G has to be negative. So we need to solve for delta G because this is what we are going to use to tell if that reaction is spontaneous or not. Now, they gave us enthalpy change, which is delta H equals to 180.7 kilojoules. Now they gave us entropy, which is 247 joules per Kelvin. And of course, they gave us temperature 298 Kelvin. Now listen and listen very carefully. The unit has to correspond. If the unit doesn't correspond, obviously you're going to get a wrong answer. If you noticed, in the enthalpy, they gave us kilojoules, whereas in entropy, they gave us joules per Kelvin. So what you're going to do here is, is either you take the joules to kilojoules or you take the kilojoules to joules, right? That is, don't actually make the mistake of just solving it like that. Make sure that the units are uniform. So for us to do that, we're going to convert the kilojoules to joules. So for us to convert from kilojoules to joules, you multiply by 1,000. So this is um, 
180700 Joes. Joes. Right? So the next thing we are going to do is now say delta G equals to delta H equals to this. Now, anywhere you see delta H, you put this. So this is um 180 minus our temperature is 298 times this. Now I would like to solve with the I like to solve with the unit so that you actually understand why it was important for us to convert the unit. Okay. Now temperature is joules. Please remember joules per Kelvin. It's same thing as saying joules per Kelvin. Take note of that. So I want to solve with the temperature times. Our entropy is two. Sorry, this is temperature. So this is just Kelvin. Our temperature is two. 4.7 joules per Kelvin. Per Kelvin cancels Kelvin. All right. Now you can see that this is now joules and this is now joules. So joules, joules can subtract. As I mean this place was kilojoules and this place was joules. You cannot carry out such subtraction. 17333. I am not interested in this value. Right? I am not interested in this value. I'm just, I just wanted to know if the answer is going to give me, I just wanted to know if the answer will give me positive or negative. So as you can see, the answer is positive, all right? So now, if something is positive, it means it is greater than zero, right? Because anything positive is greater than zero. So for the fact that this guy is greater than zero, the reaction is non-spontaneous. So they ask you to predict the spontaneity of this particular reaction. This is the reaction, formation of this from this giving us the temperature, the enthalpy, and the entropy. And we carried out delta G because this parameter is what is going to help us to know if a reaction is spontaneous or non-spontaneous. Now, after carrying out our answers, and we got positive. So positive, like I said, is non-spontaneous. So therefore, in exams, you can just solve this in your calculator and say since delta G is greater than zero, the reaction is non-spontaneous and you will get your full mark. Because if you look at the space, the space they gave us in that answer booklet, this is last year exam question, the space was very small, right? So you cannot go ahead and solve all of this there. Yeah? So all you just need to do is to carry this out in the side of your paper, your calculator. At the end of the day, you say, since delta G is greater than zero, the reaction or this particular formation of this is non-spontaneous, okay? Let me, let me explain something here, guys. Now, if a reaction is non-spontaneous in a particular process or in a particular direction, the reverse of that would be spontaneous. Now, for example, this guy, the delta G of this reaction was plus 173339. Now, if I reverse this reaction, if I reverse this reaction, that is, I bring this NO to the left-hand side and I bring the left-hand side to the right-hand side, this plus will change to negative. And for that singular reason, that reaction will now be spontaneous. So just in case you're being asked, if a reaction is non-spontaneous in a particular direction, right? After, re if you reverse that reaction, will it still be spontaneous or non-spontaneous? Now listen, if a reaction is spontaneous going forward, like in this case now, formation of NO, NO is on the product side. If this reaction to produce NO is non-spontaneous, if I reverse this reaction, it will be spontaneous because the moment I reverse this reaction, this delta G that was initially plus will change to minus. Let's quickly look at this. I said um, the first calculation, the one we just completed is uh, one of the ways you can solve for delta G. Okay, so we can also solve for delta G of a reaction using delta G of the individual reactant and product. Now this is very similar to um, what we did for entropy of formation, right? So we, cannot, we also have Gibbs free energy of formation and enthalpy of formation, all right? So basically, a formation reaction is a reaction that produces one mole of a compound from its constituent element. Now we have this particular, look at this, consider this reaction. Now A plus B giving us this. Now, for us to get the delta G of this entire reaction, we're gonna sum the delta G of the products 
minus sum that of the reactants, and we get the answer. So this guy says, calculate the standard free energy change for the reaction. Now this is the reaction, and these are the gives free energy. Now if you notice, delta G for O2 is zero because oxygen exists in nature. Any substance that exists in nature, all those elements that exist in nature, their gives free energy and their enthalpy of formation is always zero, apart from entropy. Entropy measures the degree of disorderliness, all right? So something existing in nature simply means that, of course, it will be disordered to a greater extent. But apart from that, gives um, free energy of formation and enthalpy of formation of any element is always zero. Why? Because those elements exist in nature. No amount of energy is needed to create them. No amount of heat is needed to produce them. They already exist in nature. Okay, so let's solve this question briefly. They say we should find the standard free energy of this. Now, remember what I said, we are going to go with the product, delta G. The product is CO2 and water, all right? So we're going to actually be multiplying the coefficients with the values of this. This is what we're going to have. We're going to say for the product, we have two times. This two is that of CO2. Now, what is the value of CO2? 395. So two times three, nine five plus we move down to water water is four now what is the value of water minus two two eight minus two two eight remember this is a product right basically we're having delta g of formation of product minus delta g of formation of reactants now let's open up the reactant side now, methanol is 2, the coefficient is 2, and the value for methanol is minus 166. So this is um, 2 times minus 166 plus 0, because um, oxygen is 3, 3 times 0 is 0, okay? Now, if you notice, all the units are the same, so there is no need to convert the units again. So when you actually evaluate that, now we have... Okay, so if you evaluate, if you actually press your calculator, this, if you evaluate this side, we have minus 1, 2, 2, minus, if you evaluate this side, we have this. So we now say minus 1, 2, 2, minus, minus 3, 3, 2. And this becomes minus 4, 5, 4. Please do well to confirm the calculator pressing here. Just do well to confirm the calculator. What I just wanted to pass here is the knowledge. So if you look at this, um, the delta G is negative. So I can actually say that this reaction is actually um, spontaneous because delta G is negative. Okay. 